Okay, the bit that I want to do now with you is I want to show you a little trick uh, that I really like. Uh, I think it works really well for face filters and uh, it's kind of easy to do, uh, cheap in terms of effort and uh, it involves downloading some 3D model of some kind of animal uh, from the internet. You can get those in CG Trader or TurboSquid or any of these websites that offer uh, 3D models for both for sale and for free. Um, I will post a few links on Slack so that you have a few references where you can go and uh, hunt for your um, for, for the creatures that you want to kind of perform digital surgery on. And um, I'm going to show you a simple technique in Blender. Uh, it's a modeling technique that will allow you to kind of steal body parts from these creatures and uh, uh, use them for your own purposes. So we're going to do some kind of uh, surgical extraction of uh, 3D models that we found on the internet. Um, over here I prepared some assets already. These are uh, a few FBX files that I downloaded off the internet. I have a crab, I have a dog, I have a ferret, octopus, an oyster. I'm going to use the crab because the, the crab has some cool parts. I'm going to show you what this looks like in... Uh, whoops, I think this is not in the stream. Sorry. Yeah. So crab, dog, ferret, octopus, oyster. I'm going to double click on the crab so that you can see. As you can see I'm not a pro streamer. I'm just a pitcher trying to cope with COVID. Um, and that's our cute little crab. So cute. What do we want? Uh, the legs and the, um, yeah, and the clasps are they called? I'm not sure what the name in English for this thing is. Um, are kind of nice, but I actually I want the eyes and the this little antenna in the front. They're kind of creepy. If I'm thinking, I'm. You know, kind of visually visualizing them on somebody's face, and that would be kind of creepy. And I like creepy and grotesque, uh, a little bit for aesthetic effect. So I'm gonna go for that. Right. Um, I'm back in Blender. So this is Blender. As you start and click away the presentation screen, this is what you get: basic scene. Uh, I make sure that I'm in modeling mode. So I make sure that I'm there. And uh, I don't need any of these three objects are there by default. So I can come here to the scene graph and I'm going to select all three and then right click and then delete, right? Be gone. Um, and then I'm going to import my crab. Uh, easy as that. I go to the import menu. I select FBX because that's the file format that I want to import. And then I go to whatever my crab was, which happens to be here on face filters, assets. Uh, meshes, animals, crab, import FBX, and then, you know, where's my crab? Where the hell did my crab go? Um, it just so happens that sometimes when you get uh, free stuff of the internet, it has been modeled in another software or it's taken from, yeah, some other um, geometry perhaps or some other bigger scene. And what happens is that the scales sometimes are not what you expect or that the software uses different metrics uh, or that, uh, you know, instead of meters, they're interpreted as millimeters. So it might turn out that your model is very big and you just have to zoom out to find it. Or as it happens in this case, I know that the crab is actually really, 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 really tiny. You see there? Almost so tiny that the camera kind of chops off uh, by hitting the floor. So. It's currently selected because I see the orange halo around around it. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to come here, click on the scale tool, and uh, two circles appear. I'm going to go basically drag in between the two circles, and that will just scale it uniformly around all three axes at the same time. And uh, it was quite tiny, so I'm going to scale it a few times until I get some kind of reasonable size and uh, so that I can work with it. It seems that I have uh, succeeded at uh, getting there. So I'm just, now I'm in object mode, as you can see, because the halo goes all around the object. I need to go into edit mode for the next operation to actually do the surgical procedure. I need to go into edit mode. And to do that, what the hell is happening again? Uh, uh, mm, yeah, edit mode, yeah, edit mode. So what you just happened is that it got stuck in uh, object mode because um, I still had the scale tool selected. So I, I just clicked away, clicked anywhere else in the window uh, that unselected the, um, the select tool. And then I could freely with tab move back and forth back again into object edit mode. Sometimes I forget to do that. It's, I don't know, it's kind of like a bad habit uh, that I don't click away the tools. 
and then I'm there like an idiot stuck for like three seconds before I realize what's going on. Right, so now you can see my crosshair, I, uh, crosshair mouse uh, cursor. So I can very precisely select vertices and very precisely select the bits that I need. But if I do that and I want to select all these vertices in the eye, I'm going to go insane. I'm going to be here the whole night and I'm not going to succeed. It's just too much work. It's not uh, viable. And, you know, lens filters, uh, I always say that if um, if a face filter takes longer than 15 minutes to do, you know, once you have a bit of practice, because at the beginning they always take a little bit longer, then, you know, you're spending way too much time on it. Uh, lens filters are supposed to be fairly straightforward. Um, so I'm going to unselect everything. So I can go here to selection and they select none, or I can just click A once to select everything or click A twice to select to unselect everything. A for selecting everything, double A for unselecting everything, easy as pie. And then with my crosshair, what I can do is I can point at the place of the object that I want, and then I can press the letter L. There you go, L for Luis. That's me, L. There you go, L. Uh, let's get a bit closer. I want these two antenna in the middle. L. There we go. L. There we go. And this last antenna. L. Uh, what else? What else do I want? I want the fleshy bit behind the eye. L. There we go. L. That's it. And now I have kind of selected a bunch of things in this animal that um, I would be quite happy to bring into Lens Studio and make a filter out of. Uh, so let's do just that. Um, I need to invert this selection. So I can go here to the Select menu and then do Invert Selection. And that's the bit of the animal that I'm going to delete because, yeah, I don't need it. So to delete it, I just go press the Delete key in my keyboard and uh, a context menu appears that tells me what do you want to delete and this is just too damn complicated because actually all I want to delete is just the whole thing just delete the whole thing whatever that is so if I select vertices it turns out that that's the choice you have to make if you want to delete the whole thing that's it there you go gone crab be gone something happened there they say something is there a leftover of my crab here yeah, I'm not sure. I think this might be a rendering, rendering uh, glitch. Okay, I have what I need there, but as you can see, it's a bit far away from my center. Um, this is going to give us trouble when we go into Lens Studio, because Lens Studio likes uh, any external object to be kind of nice and centered, so that then you can use the tools within Lens Studio to operate on it. Otherwise, it's gonna uh, assume that uh, this object uh, is displaced from that center and then Lens Studio it will always ask you yeah it's it's just gonna be a mess so I'm not gonna go into a great deal of detail on what the problem is I'm just gonna go back to edit mode um, and basically what we want to do is to bring this so that the uh, center aligns to the place where we would like the face to be approximately to do that I'm going to first going to make sure that um, this object is in zero 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 to do that I'm gonna Kind of go there to that you know that tiny thing that in the video is almost nearly invisible you see but I can pop it out by just pressing the letter N so N disappears N appears again N disappears N appears again etc and as you can see the location is just off the center so it's a few you know like uh, 16 centimeters uh, 25 centimeters blah, blah, blah. and actually I just wanted dead center Zero, zero, zero. I want it dead in the center because that's where Lens Studio is going to want it. Whoops. Press N for this to go. But still, the actual geometry is not centered because it's taking the center from the previous graph. So what I actually want to do now is now that they already selected, I, I go here and say set origin, send geometry to origin, and boom, there you go. Now, the the currently selected geometry which was this um, these bits of the animal that I had is now centered uh, in my scene actually I want to move it a little bit forward because let's say if the I want to place the face just behind them so I want to be the center to be just there that's it that's all I need 
perfect. So I now have performed detail surgery on him, on a creature I found on the internet. And now I'm going to export it again to FBX. Before I do that, I'm going to rename this. I find that to be quite handy because then when you import it into Lens Studio, you know what you are, uh, you know what you're importing. So I'm going to call this crab antenna plural. There we go. So I now go to export to FBX and um, I'm going to save this in my desktop as crab antenna. And uh, that's it. That will give me a 3D model with exactly what I need. Uh, I'm going to pre-visualize it for for you so you can see. I'm going to use a standard Windows pre-visualizer for 3D. Uh, so that you see a bit what I just did. You see, now I have kind of like a clean object. I can rotate, I'm actually rotating around the center right now, so I can rotate, and as you can see, I have this, this part of the animal that I need. And uh, how am I doing for time? 10 minutes. Okay, you know what? I'm just gonna do the whole thing in one video instead of starting another video. Just uh, I'm gonna start Lens Studio over I see it's more or less aligned I hope you can see everything right I'm gonna start a new project completely clean project uh, I'm gonna go to um, I'm gonna add a face mask first uh, face I'm gonna search for face face mesh that's what I meant face mesh we now have the creepy thing again going on this person's face so how oh, I love that creepy thing. And um, yeah, it's getting late. My focus is shifting a bit. I need to stretch. Um, I'm gonna drag my uh, crab antenna, so the model that I just uh, kind of took, um, and I'm gonna bring it to my assets. And then I drop it there. And uh, just behind my Explorer window, the FBX import options window appears. That's another UI fail, but um, yeah, it's just behind. It pops. It's a pop a pop under, as it's called. And I click here in import. It will do its magic, and now I have the crab antenna are now part of my scene. And if I now bring them here and attach them to the head binding, let's see how that works. There you go. You see? Ooh, creepy. And cool. Um, as you can see, the so this green object over there, that's the center of the face tracking. And the new object that I imported is dead on on that center. That's why it's so important to move the objects to the center in Blender, because then all you need to do is you select the object in uh, Lens Studio, and then you get the gizmo, and then you can move it and place it exactly where you want it. There you go. That's a filter. I'm gonna, you know, as I told you in a few videos back, I'm not the kind of person that likes to see the, their face all the time. So um, I'm okay if somebody else is, you know, we all have our thing. And um, I'm gonna just get it. Uh, yeah, that was off screen, sorry. I'm gonna get a texture, a solid texture, a black solid texture, and just drag it to my assets so that I can actually obscure the video feed because I think this uh, specific um, face filter looks a little better without a video feed. And then I go and redo the trick that I did the other day. So I can do clear color, and in the input, I just basically drag my black uh, there. I think that looks a little better. I don't even need the face, I'm gonna remove it. And now I have something that is actually tracking the face and it looks a bit like a crab face. Um, I'm not sure if to leave it in or out. It's a bit late. It's too late to make this decision. I should sleep. Um, what I will do is I'm going to get the iridescent material. There is an iridescent material in the material library of Lens Studio. 
and I'm gonna add it. That's just the last step, just for additional cool effect. And um, one in thing that you might find interesting is the fact that uh, um, ah, is that is that a bat? Crab antenna. Okay, I can just drag this to this mode. Iridescent. And now the entire thing is iridescent, which looks cool for the eyes, in fact. Well, um, it's a bit late. Um, I don't think I can make all the decisions that I need to make to make this filter uh, cooler. I have one actually published that uh, is using this same basic technique. Um, it, uh, you know, without even paying attention to it, it already got several hundred views. And um, so it's a simple technique that uh, I think anybody can do. And if you follow these steps, you can perform surgery on any 3D animal that you find on the internet or any 3D plant. Uh, no animals were harmed during the making of this video and um, yeah I hope you can go and um, find something cool and do something cool with this um, thanks and um, I'll see you in the next one